All right, uh, welcome to uh, Norfolk Wine and Spirits, Norfolk Whiskey Group. We have Master Distiller, Head Distiller of Amrut Distillery, Mr. Ashok Shokalingam, a good friend, an amazing icon of whiskey worldwide. Uh, a great honor to have you uh, with us, Ashok. Welcome. Thank you, Bikram. Uh, it goes either way. Uh, be more than happy to participate in any event that you hold. <laughs> As simple. That, that's great. Uh, Ashok, uh, you know, it, it is such a great honor to be able to uh, talk to you again, um, especially as we are launching, uh, you know, as Norfolk Whiskey Group and Norfolk Wine and Spirits, this is our uh, ninth anniversary as far as um, uh, number of years in Norfolk are concerned. Uh, concern. And also I realized that you joined Amru Distillery in February of 2004. So 18 years with this amazing distillery, uh, one of the best distilleries in the world and certainly um, you know putting indian single malt on the world map but uh, so why don't you uh, tell us about yourself and the distillery a little bit and then we can get into uh, some of the other whiskeys that have just arrived uh, here in massachusetts and uh, into the us and then we can talk about that so just tell us about your journey with amrut and how um, you and uh, yeah, amrut uh, established Amro single malt as one of the premier single malts in the world. I know um, it's not. Uh, no, 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 no. It's um, <clears throat> now uh, for me, uh, it, it is a first job uh, in the alcohol industry. Uh, so I joined Amrut in 2004, um, assuming uh, the position of sales and uh, marketing responsibility for the UK to start with. And then uh, become uh, responsible for the whole of the world uh, from 2008. Okay. So uh, uh, before that, it was, uh, I would say, like uh, on the job training, I would say it was okay. like very hard. I mean, I mean, I knew nothing about whiskey. It's all learned uh, over the years on the job. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like, you know, bread and butter. So I would say I was more engrossed into uh, the whole thing of whiskey from making to selling. Okay. Um, so uh, I think that helped me a lot. And also the time that I spent uh, in the UK for uh, 10 years, mm -hmm. and then uh, coupled with the travel around the world, uh, shaped me well as a person, as well as... Uh, on the technical aspects of uh, making whiskey in general, um, so that's 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 about me. So so as you, uh, it, it is my anniversary month. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's 18, 18 years have been completed with Amrut, and yep. then uh, Amrut as a company is a family-owned distillery established in nineteen forty-eight uh, in the south of India in the city of Bangalore. Uh, now we are approaching 75th year of uh, our anniversary for the company next year, uh, 2023. Uh, it's a great, uh, it's still a family owned business that's uh, even amazing. Right. Uh, so we, we have progressed from a small blending and bottling uh, company to uh, a producer of uh, uh, a producer of uh, uh, fine drums and brandies and uh, whiskies we produce all the spread product but now i would say we are more or less uh, specialized in uh, single malts uh, which is a basically a bread and butter uh, in addition to uh, in addition to other fine products like uh, two indies rum uh, and then the jaggery rum etc uh, so that's what the company is. and then i i'm proud to say that we as a company put india under the global uh, map of single malt whiskey, uh, without a doubt. So that's why we call ourselves uh, as a pioneer of Indian single malt because we basically put the road for others to travel on. To the and, and what a uh, uh, these are big uh, feet to swear, you know, uh, to follow. And at the same time, you know, uh, the bar has been raised uh, very high. And uh, I think you know a lot of other single malts are following through in their own way and which which is uh, fantastic which brings me to uh, uh, 
this beautiful uh, project that you have started. I mean, there's so many innovative things that Amrit has done over the years. And uh, especially over the last few years, it has really accelerated uh, with you uh, being now at base in India, as opposed to in Europe, as you were earlier. Uh, this came in last year, and it's um, these are called single malls of India. And uh, this first release is called Nidhal. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, it's a very different taste profile than a typical Amrut. Obviously, it's not distilled at Amrut. If you can tell us about it as to what your thought process is, what you're thinking, where is this going? Um, and uh, because it, it's a really beautiful story, and I, I would love people to hear from you as to uh, what the idea behind Single Malls of India project is. Um, I, I, I I'm going to pour myself a little bit because please, I really Please do. Please do. You, you, you can afford to do it. I cannot because I had to drive to work. Okay. So, so, uh, uh, but but it's, it's all registered in the head uh, in sure. terms of taste profile. Yes. Um, uh, as as uh, we have discussed before, uh, we as a distillery who are responsible to put India under the global map of uh, single malt whisky, um, we always wanted to stay ahead of the game before even others think about something, we would have done it. So mm -hmm. that is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and this been running on my head for a quite a while. Uh, um, I mean, of course, there are some uh, other uh, single malt uh, distillers in India um, who got some good spread. Probably the maturation is not being done right. Um, so with our expertise, so what I did is um, uh, 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 bought a partly matured uh, single malt from uh, another distillery okay and then i tweak the maturation further in our distillery right and then uh, and then i found it, it was uh, very different than uh, what amrut produces right and still it is good now after uh, I, I what i would say it was a an unpolished uh, uh, diamond which we polished it put that okay. way right uncut diamond has been polished by us polished. um yeah so, so um, when you, uh, since you have poured it on your glass, um, it, it's a Peter single malt, very light, but more floral. Uh, uh, and you have a bit of a, a briny coastal aroma to that. Um, uh, and it is like a kind of what I call is a Moorish whiskey. You know, if you have a sip, you feel like keep drinking it because it's so light and easy going. Uh, so that's what it is. So that's, uh, I mean, it's, it did extremely well. Uh, wherever we have launched it so far. Um, yeah. uh, so, as I said, we, uh, uh, my past chairman always uh, uh, tell that uh, coming first is one thing and staying there is the second thing. Okay. Uh, so, so we got to be you know, ahead of the game. I mean, if you look at the number of expression that we are going to taste today, for example, mm -hmm. it's quite different. And then that basically signifies uh, the effort that we put to stay ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just coming up with the idea. Uh, so this is this is way ahead of what somebody will be thinking because uh, this is not only in a way you are uh, you know preserving what's the present uh, state of affairs in Indian uh, distilling as far as single malls are concerned, because these are single malls that nobody in the world is able to be get exposed to, very similar to what a kid, a uh, cotton head or a Gordon McPhail or an independent bottler who are very well established, but who are the custodians of many single malls which would be lost to the world had these folks not stepped up and preserved uh, uh, these uh, whiskeys because they were all consigned for blends or going into blends which were basically the single walls will never be uh, see the light of the day. But then these amazing uh, independent bottlers have come up and done that. And now you're taking those same uh, sort of philosophy and taking these um, uh, unpolished uh, gems, uh, so to speak, bringing them into your fold and applying the world-class maturation techniques that uh, Amrut has you know, developed and honed over the years applying it to those single malts and bringing it there. And so allowing consumers like us to 
uh, worldwide to uh, be able to uh, experience something which otherwise they would not have seen. People might might go into a um, unnamed uh, blend, right? Is that is that the idea? To take some. I, of those- I could I I couldn't agree more. It's exactly what it is. Um, you know, uh, uh, since, since since we have uh, I would say reasonably good knowledge on different kinds of spread mm-hmm. in terms of, for example, mal spread. Uh, by just looking at the profile of the mall spread, uh, I could basically visualize which barrel that would fit in. Uh, there are some goes well with the sherry cast. There are some uh, goes with the bourbon cast. There are some uh, which needed to be matured in a virgin oak cast. So all those knowledge that we have gathered over the years helped to shape up this single mall. Now is this mall spread, for example, is light. Um, I cannot afford to put it in a virgin oak because you will lose the balance. Uh, nice. Here, the, the, the oak extraction has to be subtle and balanced. That's what exactly we did it. Right. Uh, and if you look at the whole uh, profile of this whiskey, it has a kind of, uh, as I said, coastal aroma, a nice citrus note, and more floral, uh, very easy drinkable at 46%. Yeah, forty six percent, and it's a um, like Amrut has a lot of uh, you know deep notes. This uh, richer mouthfeel, uh, like the Sultanas, the uh, rich fruit comes into uh, into play. This one is more leaner. Uh, it's more lighter on his feet, like you said. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of um, uh, hints of Ardmore, a uh, little bit of the Kalila, you know, like you said, the coastal. You know, uh, it's a blend of that and maybe a tinge of space side coming into it to give it more. Uh, lightness um, uh, is excellent. Now, is this mostly ex bourbon barrels, or you have used other uh, barrels as well to um, polish this uh, whiskey? No, 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 mostly ex bourbon. Mostly ex bourbon. Okay, uh, makes sense. Um, fantastic. So, um, what are we going to? I mean, I'm sure you can't disclose everything that you have <laughs> planned for the future. But what are some of the other projects you have along these lines? Because uh, this is one distillery, but I'm sure there are numerous other distilleries you might be looking at and uh, maybe developing those, um, you know, gems, polishing them. And some of them are going to probably come out and some we may not see. But what else can we uh, look forward to down the road? It uh, looked like I had to open up a gem cutting factory now. <laughs> okay. So you have quite a few. So you have a quite a few projects that you're working on. That's the I way I read that, it. I would say that much. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I hope I hope uh, we don't have to wait too long. Let's put it this way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we, we are trying to basically uh, do right thing at the right time. Uh, uh, it's the only time can tell. We we we, uh, we, we, are, we are trying to do our best. Uh, it, it's not about uh, it's not about making money or making profit. It, it, it is about the love that we have for single mom, mm-hmm. right? And then. Uh, wanted to stay ahead of the game, miles ahead, and just to bring out the best what this country can offer. Mm-hmm. I, I, my prediction is like maybe five years down the line, five to ten years, India will forge its own category of uh, single malt, like Japanese or uh, Australian that we have today. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is is really a matter of time. They have a real potential. Yeah. All I am hoping for is everyone basically play by the rule, produce some of the best single malt that will help the category uh, even further than uh, what it is. At the moment, we have three, four players. Um, uh, I would think maybe another two or three will join into the foray. Um, probably then we'll forge a strong category of Indian single right. malt. Right. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, uh, one of the, and I'll uh, talk about Amrut, um, uh, the, one of the, uh, mainstays that really put Amrut on the world map that, uh, you know, had a lot of people stand up and pay attention uh, was the Fusion. And this particular is a special edition Fusion uh, commemorating, I think, 15 years of Amrut. Uh, ten, no, ten, uh, 10th anniversary of Amrut Fusion. Tenth, uh, uh, it's, uh, that's why it's called Fusion X. A Fusion. Uh, okay, I stand correct. Yeah. 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 Thank you. yeah. So can you tell us about Fusion a little bit, and then specifically on uh, Fusion X um, before we move on to other whiskeys. Yeah, Fusion uh, is a bread and butter for me, and uh, it's an iconic brand within our portfolio. What made Amrut popular all around the world? Um, so uh, uh, in 2010, 
the fusion was launched. So okay. in 2020, we wanted to basically celebrate 10 years of this iconic brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we decided to launch that brand on the birthday of our past chairman, who was responsible for creating the brand fusion. Uh, so um, what we have done is uh, we have uh, uh, we have made one uh, special, uh, I wouldn't say blend, uh, recipe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we matured it in, uh, obviously, bourbon cast to start with, mm-hmm. and then moved to uh, PX cast, okay. um, and matured much, 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 much longer than what a normal fusion would have been matured. Right. And that's what the fusion X is. Right. Uh, you can see like a lot of bright fruits, uh, 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 I would say like a kind of sweet bacon, leather tobaccos, um, and, 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 50% is amazing. It's amazing how soft it is. Oh, yeah. That shows the maturity. It, it's, it's the maturity. And also fusion itself means a uh, combination of numerous elements, right? It's um, uh, peated malt. Uh, it's also unpeated. W- what are the components of the base? It, it's only two components. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the word fusion comes because of the fact that we have used two different uh, barley varieties from different tava. Um one is a Scottish peter, uh, another one is a, a unpeated Himalayan barley. Right. Uh, so both are basically distal uh, separately, measured separately, then they are married together to form fusion. So that's what fusion is. Uh, what about the casts? Are they, are they both ex bourbon or do you have some sherry elements? In the yeah, initially, you, initially, you start off with ex bourbon yeah. uh, and, and a virgin oak combination. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, uh, normally fusion is not measured in a sherry cask. Uh, uh, but this one, uh, Fusion X, is measured in a sherry cask. Sherry cask. Okay, fantastic. Uh, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. The package is uh, excellent. Uh, so along the ways, I mean, Amrut has always uh, created <coughs> various expressions. And uh, what fascinates me is the core of Amrut stays the same. The fruity core, the extraction, the real robust nature of Amrut is there. But then, whether it's an ex bourbon cast, whether it's a sherry cast, whether it's a Caroni cast, which is uh, is a um, is a rum distillery that's closed, uh, rye cast barrel that we had, all of the sherry, um, it takes it allows that um, it takes the impact of the barrel and then the and it kind of changes itself enough to uh, retain its character at the same time reflect the difference and that that is really beautifully manifested in Amrut. It's not letting the cask overpower, but at the same time is allowing it to say, you know what, you're there. And this is what Amrut, this is a new or different Amrut that you present itself. So what do you have to say about Amrut? How when you um, express in different casks, what are you trying to do as a distillery and as a master distiller? No, uh, see, the, the, the idea is pretty much what you have said. I wanted to signify what my core characters are and then complement it with the, what the finish can offer. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, name it whether it is a rye cask or a caroni. For example, caroni cask, you can clearly see the demerara sugar and toffee note, uh, which is complemented by the caroni cask. Right. Uh, but still, we maintain the significant, uh, I mean, the core character of Ambrut, which is like a kind of little bit of um, uh, licorice and orangey citrus and and fruity and bourbony character. Yeah. Uh, so, so you can imagine, like, and, and, and the same on the right. It's the only thing is, you, you have to basically watch out at the maturation length when you try to do, to do the finish to ensure that the balance is maintained. I mm-hmm. mean, for example, if I let the cast mature in a coroni for too long, it'll become more of coroni character uh, masking what the amrut character is. So, so that, that's a tricky part. It to maintain the balance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so all these casts, I mean, you know, there are numerous other distilleries who do it well too, um, you know, and Amru does it really well. But in addition to these experiments, you know, um, uh, you have the first triple distilled uh, single malt, uh, Triparva, that was released, um, I believe, in 2020. Amazing. Yeah. Again, you know, that does the same thing, that, that has that Amrut characteristic, but on top of it, it has a 
uh, has a uh, reflection of something that uh, that only a triple distillate can impact. And that is a beautiful uh, expression too. So how do you think about it? And what was your thought process in uh, creating Triparva? Which is- No, which is- it was, what happened was, um, uh, it was when I and Surinder was <laughs> traveling in, uh, in Scotland. And uh, uh, then uh, we, we were sitting at home one day and then uh, discussing a few things. Then I asked Render, why can't we do one like a, a triple distal? That's the one area we haven't touched it yet. Yeah. And then I think uh, the first set we distilled was in 2012. Okay. Um, uh, at the time I was living in the UK, but I was literally eating Surinder's head. Have we done it? Have we done it? So right. uh, it's like a lot of pressure on him. Right. And then he at last managed to get it done, first batch. And then we did the second batch in 2014. Um, uh, when I have uh, tasted a well-matured uh, triple distill of ours, which is like, I would say, five years plus, what it reminded me was of uh, Little Mill. A oh, Little Mill? Okay. Oh, yeah. Was so... Uh, yeah, it's a, it just, it has a little mill has a, like a kind of one plantain note, uh, a kind of a semi-ripened banana, uh, mm. I, I can say. Um, that's exactly what I got it. Mm. Uh, when, when, I mean, it was like a distant memory of uh, uh, me tasting triple, uh, little mill uh, in Germany, which yeah. got uh, registered into my mind, like so strong. Yeah. The moment I know, I just straight away, Correct with that. that. Of course, yes. it, it happens at time. Uh, it is it is like like a lot of muscovada sugar uh, coated with a little bit of uh, more floral character than a, a double distill, which is mm-hmm. what you would expect. Yeah, uh, it's brilliant. That's great. We just had a um, you know one of our um, Norfolk whiskey members, John Tedro, the other day brought a little mill. Uh, from, okay. Yeah. From um, I think it's uh, independent bottler. Independent bottler, mostly it's independent bottling. Models. Mostly independent Scots. I think Scott selection was the independent bottler. Uh, it was bottled at forty six percent ABV. It was absolutely stunning. We were doing tasting it after about. Uh, I have to be a little careful here about a dozen whiskeys, and some of them were cast friend, but that character of Little Mill still still stays. Percent was absolutely stunning. I've told him I've. Uh, commended him on his um, selection of bottle there. And it, it was really beautiful. But the idea of creating a triple distilled um, whiskey, there are very few distilleries, even in Scotland, which has over 125 distilleries active at this point. Uh, I believe um, only a handful create double distilled and triple distilled. I think um, uh, Springbank is one of them. Uh, and possibly uh, Brooklady has done few they have even done quad, a quadruple distill quadruple dis- uh, yeah and then you have uh, arkentoshin arkentoshin does triple distill i'm not sure if they do double distilling do they do double distilling as well uh, no it's only triple distill only triple distilling but i, I think um other than uh Brooklady and springbank i don't even know if any other distillery does no, I, I, even i can't think of anybody who has done it in uh, scotland it's more common to irish than to irish uh, uh, scottish yeah distilling. yeah yeah, so, so that's amazing that at Amrut you're able to do that. But even more amazing, after that, uh, or all, at the same time, you came up with um, another whiskey called uh, Amrut Single Grain uh, Whiskey, which uh, if you want to talk about that, that, that that'll be great because, um, you know, obviously, if I understand correctly, it's not necessarily distilled at Amrut, but it's also it's matured at Amrut, right? Yeah, we have we don't have a distill. I mean, uh, distillation facility for grain. Yeah. So we bought that grain spread, and it was distilled from rice. Okay, rice. Okay. Yeah. Is that correct. Oh, yes. I didn't realize that. It was distilled from rice. Uh, what happened is in uh, uh, southern India, uh, you know that uh, staple crop is rice. Of course. Okay. Compared to north, where you have wheat, wheat. Uh, majority, right? Correct. So. Uh, so all the most of the grain distilleries in the south um, uh, uses uh, broken rice as well as uh, of course wheat as well or corn whenever it is available. So this particular one was was a uh, distilled from uh, rice, and um, 
I was very keen to do that, and I was same thing. I was literally eating. Surinder said, "I want, I want grain whiskey. I want grain whiskey." Mm-hmm. And every week when we call, have a call, and then really out of hesitation, he put it into the bar, right? And then he, he procured uh, a new make uh, grain. A new, new, new make grain spread, and okay. then we basically uh, put into the barrel. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, if I remember, the first lot was same, two thousand and twelve. Oh, okay. uh, when when yeah. we cast in, and yeah. then um, uh, I bottled it um, after it took over. Uh, yeah. uh, it was almost like seven years old. Uh, right. It was it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. It is. It is. I mean, great. I, I mean, uh, some of the people uh, uh, who tasted that they said, um, "I'm talking about the whiskey connoisseur." Yeah. Uh, I have tasted numerous like grain whiskeys that this is like one of the best that I have tasted. That's a big compliment. I mean, see, the thing is, uh, uh, we dare to experiment, right? And uh, and uh, being independent, uh, uh, and for example, my hands are absolutely loose. I can literally go and do whatever I want. Um, so when I have that total liberty and freedom. um that is a big plus for me i don't need to ask anybody uh, should i do that right mm-hmm. so um and that's how uh, quite a few novel expression that i was able to create later on right. um but but me spending that time in the whiskey hotland for 10 years and traveling around the world right. really helped me to uh, broaden my horizon um to what else i can do i always look at like what people are not doing what that i can possibly do it mm-hmm. that's that's where it all came from right so in the normal range of single malt scotch scotch is still considered the you know um uh, the gold standard and it is the gold standard in many ways right it's it's a pioneering um uh, you know uh, spirit for whiskey if you will um uh in many ways uh so triple distilling is uh, somewhat unusual uh and grain whiskey is even more unusual bottling is single grain whiskey uh even in scotland uh, a lot of people connoisseurs especially uh, or uh, even the layman don't really look at grain whiskey as even you know consider that and this was absolutely phenomenal this was sensational whiskey it tasted really well even though it is not distilled at uh, amrut but it does have elements uh, or the dna of amrut enmeshed in that because you can taste amrut in yeah. that in that uh, single grain and uh, especially we at norfolk wine and spirits norfolk whiskey group we are big fans of uh, grain whiskey uh, and we think it's it's really a, um, an underappreciated uh, category uh, so kudos to you in recognizing that and at the same time uh, going ahead and putting this big risk because it is a risk frankly speaking to uh, go ahead and um uh, take a distillate from rice put that in barrels uh that you could be putting something else that you would instantly sell and basically uh taking a leap of faith and uh creating this uh, single grain uh, whiskey uh, the first single grain whiskey i think in india the first also. single grain from india yeah so uh, first triple distilled first single grain first single malt uh so many first right and uh and then Uh, and this is for india but then 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 you ended up creating something which is first in the world um that brings us to uh spectrum um yes and, and this is I, i'm not sure which uh version of spectrum this is but the video is pretty awesome you know it's better than the james bond movie for sure <laughs> <laughs> it's a d- 004 uh, 004 yeah that's what is in the label right correct yeah is 004 yeah Uh, tell, tell us about is uh, uh, what was the idea behind it the color is absolutely gorgeous it's such a i mean it's hard to see it, it, the color in the video but it's, it's, it's like a dark coffee it is a dark coffee it is really really beautiful rich rich color and i'm going to um, uh, as as you can see we already done a little bit of damage but i'm going to uh, you know uh, inflict more damage to this bottle by pouring it in my glass and liberating it from the bottle and yeah. uh, and if you can tell us a little bit more about this particular expression which 
I believe are 6,000 bottles released for the entire world, right? For this. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So please. Uh, I, I think uh, <laughs> this idea uh, uh, popped into my head at uh, uh, 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 specifically. 2.30 in the morning, exactly, okay. when I was in the UK. Okay. Um, it, was, it was 7 in India uh, in the morning at the time. Uh, I, used to, I used to smoke at the time. Okay. So uh, I just went down and uh, I, for some reason I wasn't getting sleep. So I had a cup of coffee and was smoking. <laughs> then only, like, there, was a, there was a flash on the head. Hey, why no one has um, built a barrel with a, like a multiple oak wood? Uh, we know like you have a, a whiskey matured in French limousine oak or uh, uh, sherry cask or uh, virgin American oak or uh, bourbon oak. Um, so I was thinking, why nobody has done anything like that? Then I immediately called Ricky back home. Uh, Who's Ricky? Then, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 Ricky is my uh, uh, my managing director and the owner of Amber Distillery. I see. So we have, uh, yeah. So so we are friends. So that's why I'm still hanging around here. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> that's uh, good. so 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 I called him and then, hey, uh, buddy, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, 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 what is your opinion? I was saying, what the hell are you doing? It's like 2.30 in the morning for you. Yeah. Uh, and you're calling me and uh, asking this now? And then I said, well, I, I didn't get sleep. And then just I was like uh, relaxing. And then just this popped into my head. Uh, what do you think? Then he said, this looks an amazing idea. Just go ahead and do it. Maybe you do five barrels now. Mm -hmm. And then we'll mature it and see how it works. So next week, I jumped into the plane. Yeah. Uh, went to Spain sat with my Cooper. And then when I told my Cooper that I wanted to custom build a barrel with the five different oak woods, I was telling him I want a Spanish oak, I want a French oak, I want a American oak, I want PX and Oloroso uh, staves cut into 200 liter barrel size. And, and then that guy was like, I'm running this cooperage for the last 45 years. Right. And no one has ever asked me to make such a barrel. Right. And then he was like asking, like, where the hell you get all these ideas from? Uh, and then, okay, the idea is good, but how do you do it? Because uh, you cannot uh, process all the five different varieties in the same way. For example, uh, Spanish folk and French folk can throw more, 10 times more tannins than American oak. Right. So having said that, you, you, you cannot char uh, a French and Spanish oak, okay. whereas American oak got to be charred to release the vanillin and, and caramelization right. product. Okay. So how do we do it? So then it was like a half a day of brainstorming and then, then we came up with an idea. Mm -hmm. I said, like, let us make five individual barrels. Uh, let us make an American oak barrel with a char three and then French the light toast on it and then Spanish even lighter toast Sherry, PX, and Oloroso cut into 200. We made five barrels. Okay. And then dismantled all the five. Oh, and then put okay. one stave after the other. And oh, no, we made the sixth barrel. Oh. Uh, so what you've done it now, you have processed all the woods the way it has to be. And then still brought them together into the new barrel. What I call it, the spectrum barrel. Oh, and okay. then uh, on the one hand, uh, one side of the barrel head, we put the new American oak with chatri. On the other side, a new French oak with a toast. Okay, we okay. build the barrel and then ship it over to India. And then uh, we transferred a three-year-old matured whiskey into the Spectrum barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, to be very honest, the first year, it wasn't very encouraging. It was like a kind of so-so. And the second year, mm -hmm, interesting. Yeah. And then the third year was fantastic. Okay. And then uh, that was a Spectrum 005. We oh. had a five oh. different oak. Uh, we made only 1,000 bottles on the first release. It's nice. a big box. And then what I realized is the Spanish oak become like a little bit spongy, uh, which is naturally. So mm -hmm. then I have removed that on the next version that become okay. over four. 
okay. where you have a French, New American Oak, PX, and all of this tape. Mm-hmm. And the second time, again, I made it 10 barrels now, from 5 to 10 barrels. Okay. Then second release was uh, 2,000 bottles. I see. And okay. then uh, once I was convinced with the OO4 that is shaping up well and stuff, mm-hmm. then I ordered more barrels. Now you are having 6,000 bottles. 6, so yeah. it is an incremental uh, way of going up. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, this will never be mass produced because of a complication. And then the, the making this barrel costs a lot of money right. as well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's the reason why it, it was kind of uh, um, uh, uh, limited and then uh, that is what it is and if you look at the complexity of the whiskey what it can offer yeah. uh, it, it is phenomenal it is it is not a whiskey where you put it in your mouth and just drink it and go it just you sip enjoy every bit of it uh, you will also notice that's this one is like a little bit, little bit drier side on the finish. On the finish. Uh, yeah, that's that's because of the the French fellow. Uh, French fellow can give a, like more of tannin, as I told you before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so, but uh, it has uh, it has a uh, uh, raisins and dead syrup and coffee, uh, uh, mocha, um, a little bit of leathery note. Uh, I mean, you, the, the flavors evolve and every sip. It will take uh, a lot of time to really dissect through each and every layer. Because there's yeah. layers and layers of flavor. Layers but, you know, one of the, you know, without really getting into and trying to dissect every flavor, uh, one of the overwhelming things that I got initially when we tasted it this afternoon, and the whiskey was about, I would say, um, uh, 32, 33 degrees because it was basically in a, you know, uh, it is pretty cold out here today uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. So we yeah. opened it within 10 minutes of receiving the bottle. So it was a little cold, but the nose, the start, the middle, the finish, it is completely integrated and it goes in rich and big right through with a finish. Even though it is dry, it is still lingers for a long time. It and, is. And, and, and there's no jagged edges where one thing is speaking out more or loudly. It is very consistent, right? To you point. you would notice uh, another great thing on this whiskey is uh, uh, it, it is a minty finish. You have an element of mint. Mint, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, really great. So um, I, I've been waiting to. Um, uh, this is a masterpiece. This is really fantastic, and um, I, I know when I was there in 2019. Um, you know, uh, speaking to you and also uh, visiting uh, with uh, uh, Surinder Kumar. I think that was his last month there uh, at Amrut before he retired. Um, we were talking about other woods other than oak, you know, and, uh, you know, and my night, you know, I, I don't, I'm not in the industry. I don't really do the production side of it. But uh, one of the things we wanted to know with the iconic wood uh, of India is sandalwood. And um, I said, have you experimented or looked at sandalwood? And uh, the answer was no, sandalwood is not really, it is just too intense in nose or, um, or something that will impart flavor. So it's not really appropriate for whiskey. But have you looked at um, other sources of trees or wood other than oak to look at uh, maturing single malls? Because in many countries you can do that, like Ireland is doing chestnut and a uh, few other types of oak, um, maybe even some Brazilian, um, uh, not only oak, but other, other uh, forms of wood. Have you, have you looked at it or have you considered it? If you can disclose it, that's fine. But I, I just want to know, um, what are your thoughts on that? No, we haven't considered that, to be very honest. Uh, the reason is, for example, um, uh, many, many three varieties, uh, one of the problems that you get into is the uh, oils that they can leach into the uh, whiskey. Mm -hmm. Uh, First of all, we have to be uh, very sure that chemically it is stable and safe for human consumption. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sandalwood uh, will leach out a hell out of oils and it will be like absolutely uh, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, uh, we don't know whether... Uh, sandalwood will have the cooperage properties uh, in terms of uh, heating it and bending it 
and mm -hmm. also uh, uh, it is not porous. Okay, so mm -hmm. the idea is whatever you put it in, it should stay. And if we come at, uh, come out and then look at the barrel next day, nothing is left. Everything is like uh, gone out. Gone out. Uh, <laughs> there's no point, right? So, right. so from that per perspective, I'm not sure about it, but uh, it's uh, extremely aromatic. Um, straight away you can tell. Uh, 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 straight away you can tell it will, it will not work. Thick wood, it's not it's not possible because it will be uh, it will not give you a cooperage properties. Okay. Um, so. Uh, Having said that, uh, our focus is on what is the different dimensions that we can bring into uh, uh, in terms of uh, creating a flavor profile into the whiskey, still working with oak barrels only, because oak is uh, tested and tried for centuries and then uh, chemically it is stable, it has a tight cooperage and fit for human consumption, etc. So we, we, we are not moving away from that. Uh, sure. well, okay, fantastic. So that brings it to uh, the next, uh, you know, whiskey, which is a single cast of uh, Spectrum, which um, is at bottle at 60% um, ABV for uh, Norfolk Whiskey Group. So thank you so, so very much for this. And um, I'm gonna take this opportunity with you because you have tasted it and you have sampled it. You have created this masterpiece. So I'm gonna open it and um, share the first bottle uh, with you, the first sip with you. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you are the only store uh, who had managed to get a single Casca Spectrum. We have done it in the past one time. You know what? The destiny is it has it has never gone there. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. It uh, we we bottled a half cask for Canada, okay. and then the warehouse made some mistake, and then that bottle went all over the world. Oh, uh, okay. uh, not to Canada. Okay, and uh, and uh, somebody basically traced a couple of bottles in Norway, uh, and it went like all over Europe, I guess. So we lost complete it, it be, because of the human error on on the warehousing system. It has happened, mm -hmm. but uh, you are the only store who got a full barrel of Spectrum cast bottled as a single cast. No one else, and Thank no you. one will. So uh, even if you ask me again, I will not give you. I can okay. tell you straight away. So so right. say, say, save a bottle for me. So <laughs> I'll pick it up when I come come to Boston next time. Of course. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to let you know that um, every time I see uh, there's another gentleman from uh, Norfolk Whiskey Group, his name is Barry Gauthier. He always says, um, uh, so when is a show coming over? Uh, we need to uh, go for golfing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you are. Uh, you're so, 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 so my next round of golf in Boston is on you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, an absolute <laughs> honor for sure. And uh, uh but yeah, you know, thank you for this. And, and just the look at the color on this. This it, it, it is like nice a Coca Cola. 20, like it's, it's <laughs> like a nice, rich, forty-year-old Tony Port. If somebody says this is Tony Port, I can say absolutely correct. That's how rich the color is. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, really nice. Uh, thank you, thank you for this. Uh, we will absolutely. No, no, no. I I want you to tell me the tasting note for this because um, I can't. I can't remember that, although I have written the tasting notes at the distillery, uh, but it makes a lot of difference between the normal spectrum and this one. It should, it should be. So I, I will give you my first brief impressions because uh, I just opened it and um, I would like to take maybe half an hour, 45 minutes to do that, but the first initial impressions. So compared to the normal spectrum, uh, it is much richer in the sense that uh, the uh, the sultana notes uh, the uh, not I shouldn't say raisin but the almost the dates sultana it's are much prominent. The mocha almost like a uh, coffee, a burnt coffee mocha notes are a lot more there. Um, it's absolutely it's leaner. Also, it, uh, uh, the the major spectrum was a little bit more fatter and uh, rounder. This one is more leaner, leaner. Uh, more intense intense flavor. Uh, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, thank you. But with time, uh, I think the bottle of whiskey will open up more. And um, down the road, next time we uh, get together, uh, I will have more complete notes on this. But it's really, so, really nice. 
Uh, cheers. This is absolutely cheers. delicious. Yeah. Mm. So that brings you to the other bottle that um, we received today. And this we have not opened, and I don't intend to open, <laughs> open as well. <laughs> not today, but it will get opened. Uh, yeah. A beautiful, beautiful package. Uh, this is called the Greedy Angels, I believe. Uh, yeah. And uh, it is uh, uh, 12 year old. So um, in terms of maturing in India, it's, uh, it's a massive amount of time. So if you can tell us a little about uh, what Greedy Angel is all about and um, what did, are you trying to express with this affiliate expression, that'll be very good for everyone watching this video. So we have a, a, in the Greedy Angel series, we have eight, 10 and 12 years old. 12 years old is the oldest ever we bottle at the distillery. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, uh, the, the term greedy angels is because uh, the quantum of whiskey that is lost for maturation uh, year on year is called the angel share. Uh, that is running at about like 10% per year in India, uh, especially in Bangalore. So, so that means 10% of the whiskey in a barrel every year. Every year, on average. So, yeah. so for example, if you have a two hundred liter barrel at the year one, uh, you will have one eighty, and then year two, one eighty minus eighteen. Eighteen. So okay. it's basically on the residual, uh, and uh, maybe it fluctuate between uh, one percent yeah. here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, average, you can just basically say uh, uh, ten percent a year. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what. Uh, a 12 year old barrel will give you, right? So another important aspect, what happens in uh, uh, Bangalore is, what we have is, uh, we have a ethanol concentration in the barrel because of the uh, low humidity. Correct. Uh, and uh, sim similar to what happens in Kentucky. So uh, the strength goes up. ABV so goes this up. one, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this new mix sprit was cast at 62.8%. And uh, the matured, 125, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the matured whiskey went to 71%. 71%, okay. That's 142 US proof. Right. Okay. Uh, and then what we have done differently on this 12 year old, the first 12 year old, I remember it is 100 bottles worldwide. Okay. Yeah. The second, this one is 240 bottles worldwide, out of which 36 bottles. Uh, were sent to the US. Um, so that is one of the 36 bottles uh, that uh, what you are displaying now. Oh, fantastic. Uh, on, oh. The, on the maturation part, we have done it in the reverse way. The New Mex Sprit was matured in a first 12 PX Sherry oh, task okay. for mm -hmm. uh, about seven, uh, eight years. And, that's, and a big, then, that's a big cask, right? So you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, find a little barrel. Yeah. And then. From there, we have recast into uh, one ex bourbon barrel and one 100 liter uh, virgin oak uh, third fill. Oh, um, virgin, virgin oak, but third fill. Okay. Third fill. So, oh. uh, so it was sitting in that barrel for the next uh, four, four, four and a half years. Yeah. Uh, it is totally the reverse of what normally the industry does, where you mature it in bourbon cast and then finish it in PX. Yeah, we have yeah. done it in the reverse way. Reverse way yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just like uh, uh, it's it has a perfect combination of uh, sherry truffle uh, toffees and it's elegant at sixty percent. It's just you take hours together. You don't feel like uh, drinking it. Keep nosing, nosing, nosing. Yeah, at the, at the flavor evolve. <laughs> uh, right. it, it is awesome. So, so, so 12 years old. So, um, when do you, so how many PX casts do you have? You have more than one PX cast or just one PX cast? Only one. Only one PX cast. So, so the 500 liters goes in. So the 500 uh, liters uh, is aging for, or maturing for eight years, right? About seven to eight years. Seven in, to eight PX, years. In, in PX, but uh, the maturation loss is a little lesser than bourbon cast. Because, because bigger, barrel bigger size thing. is big. Yeah. Uh, uh, when the barrel size is big, the impact of maturation also will be less, and also your angel share is also less. 
So instead of 10%, probably I'd have lost it there about 8%. Eight, But once okay. you come to bourbon cast, it basically goes right, up. Okay. It, it, yeah. it, it yielded 240 bottles 240. at 60%. Percent. 60%. So, so 240 bottles, uh, if, uh, if we do a, a rough calculation, mm -hmm. 240 into 0.75, that's 180 liters. 180 liters out of 180, uh, 180 no 180 into 60 divided by 70 yeah i got only 154 bottles uh, i mean 154 liters left from yeah. 500 500 you can yeah. imagine how much i've lost <laughs> <laughs> 180 of five. yeah so that, that that's quite significant you know that's less than more than 60% your loss you know yeah. 65 you know 64 yeah. 65% I mean, if you if you, if you look at uh, the subtraction method of uh, 200 become 180, and then 180 minus uh, 162, if you just keep going like that, that'll that'll pretty much work out the same. Correct, correct. Uh, amazing, amazing the amount of angel share uh, we have in India, and again, uh, reverse maturation, if you will, in this particular case. Again, something. You're always trying to do something different, something innovative. Something if, if, if if you look at uh, the bottle. Yeah, uh, it should say ex bourbon finish. You see that? Uh, let me check. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pull that up. See, see that what, what is inside? Oh, yeah, it does say that right, right on the uh, in the front of the box. It says ex bourbon. Yeah, yes. yeah. See, it's ex bourbon yeah. finish. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is which I think could be a new. Uh, it's probably probably a new thing. You know, I, I don't think I have seen it before. So uh, yeah, that is that, that is the whole thing. What we do yeah. at Amrut. <laughs> yeah, very good. So, so we talked about a lot of these innovations and creativity. Um, you know, grain, uh, single grain whiskey. We talk about a triple distilled uh, uh, whiskey. We talk about different staves, different finishes. Um, not only that, we have talked about different distilleries being matured at at Amroth, even though this is a uh, almost like an independent bottler type uh, situation. Uh, what is next? What are we looking at in 2022? and beyond something that you can share with us so that you know people are excited and looking forward to uh seeing from amrut obviously continuation can, 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 can i say you uh in a, in a line we'll keep you enticing okay see <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. watching this you know it won't be yeah, boring yeah, that's right yeah it won't be boring <laughs> all right very good ashok uh, always a pleasure always a pleasure and an honor to uh talk to you uh wealth of knowledge uh amazing amazing stuff you're doing keep on rocking and uh thank you for your time i really appreciate it cheers Th thank you vikram uh vikram uh much appreciated and uh, meet up soon absolutely cheers take care thank you take care bye bye bye